All right, folks, it's time for our next six and a half Creedmoor video. And this one's gonna be exciting. We are gonna shoot nothing but tiny groups because the bullets we're shooting are the 135 grain Burger Classic Hunter. I've only shot five of these so far, so I still got 95 of them left. And the five that I did shoot was over in 6.5 Grindle. And the group was awesome. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they're gonna shoot here in the Baker's Half Dozen Creedmoor. I'm expecting big things because they have a very big price tag. The best price I saw on them was over at Natchez Shooter Supplies. They've got them for 42 bucks. But right now, as of the time I'm filming, they're out of stock. But that was by far the best price. Brownells was 48 bucks. Mid-South Shooter Supplies, 47. Midway is $51. So you get the point, they're pricey. They are very, very pricey. Doesn't necessarily stick with the theme of our little 6.5 Creedmoor series we got going on here where we're shooting an inexpensive gun and we're using inexpensive reloading dies and we're using inexpensive brass and we're trying to, uh, you know, keep things, keep the price under control. But you know what? If there's one place where you should occasionally splurge, it's on some bullets, especially this type of bullet where this is the 135 grain classic hunter. If you're looking for a deer hunting bullet, what do you, you need one box to work up your loads and get things ironed out. And then the other box will last you 10 years. Now, if you're going out shooting 50 hogs every night, maybe it's not going to be worth it. But yeah, if you're just chasing, you know, shooting a couple whitetails every year, then a box of these will last a long time and it's pretty easy to justify. Regardless, it's going to be cheaper than the, the cheapest factory ammo. So if you need, you know, if you need to convince the wife, that's the way to go there is compared to factory ammo rather than other bullets. But we'll see. They, they got to perform. They have got to perform. They need to live up to that price tag. So in the last video, we loaded up a whole bunch of random crap and we shot 70 rounds, but now we've got 100 pieces of beautifully fire-formed brass. So all of our brass is now once fired. We're shooting the Starline brass with the small rifle primers and they're all in a nice once fired state, ready to rock. The biggest problem in the last video was with the scope here on the compass. It fell off. These little knobs came loose. I was shooting in a lead sled and it was a whole lot of, uh, whole lot of banging around going on with the gun. So what I did was pulled out some blue Loctite. Where'd it go? Yeah, I got some blue, you know, medium strength thread locker. This stuff usually isn't that hard to break loose, but it does a pretty good job of uh, keeping things tight. So put a little drop of this on each one of those uh, knobs because I really didn't want to have to, you know, torque them down like crazy or anything. So now they're on there with the blue thread locker. Hopefully they won't go anywhere. And we're going to continue to use the 4 to 12 scope that I bought with my gun in, in the Vortex package. It's been doing okay. Like I, I like the reticle. I'm able to aim pretty well. So I don't feel like it's holding me back a bunch. Maybe a little, but not a bunch. I think we're going to be able to shoot some good groups today with it. So Berger has got low data on their website for this bullet. I guess I could describe the bullet and show it to you. Did, did I already do that? Did I already put up a picture? It's a beautiful bullet. And the ogive design of these bullets are supposed to be jump tolerant. Like it's it's supposed to be able to deal with a bit of jump to the lands. Some of the other burger designs, their VLD bullets and stuff, you really need to get them close to the lands to get the accuracy from what I've heard. But these are supposed to be a little more tolerant to a bit of jump. And man, they are pretty. Burger de definitely has the prettiest, shiniest bullets. No doubt about it. So to, to, their, to their load data, here's the problem. They have eight different powders. Well, H414 and Winchester 760 are two of the powders they have, and those are the same powders. So let's call it seven powders. Of those seven powders, H414 and Winchester 760 are the only ones I've got. And I really don't want to shoot those today. So what I'm going to shoot is kind of the primary powder we've been working with here a little bit, Reloader 17. I actually picked up uh, another pound of this. So we've had good success with Reloader 17 so far. That's what we're going to shoot today. The other is IMR 4350. I've had, had several people request that I try out IMR 4350. Like H4350, a little more popular, but a little harder to find. But hopefully IMR 4350, yeah, we'll try it out. We'll see how it does. So I have no load data for these, for these powders. We're just going to make it up as we go. So that's another reason why today's video is going to be exciting. Very high probability of blowing our face off. Well, I wouldn't say there's a high probability. I would say there's a higher than normal probability of blowing our face off. But when we get to the point of picking out our, our, our charges, I'll walk you through the process of how I am choosing what I'm choosing. 
All right, anytime you go, you leave the manuals behind and you go try and make it up on your own. You really are, you're on your own. But it's generally pretty easy to figure out about what area you should be in as far as charge weight. So I'll tell you what, the, the other thing we mentioned a bit in the last video, but never got to, was the Hornady overall length gauge. Back in our first uh, Baker's Half Dozen Creedmoor video, we used this case right here that I cut a slit down the side of with a Dremel. We were using this to test our maximum overall length with bullets. But this is a much cleaner solution. What you can do is get a modified case like this guy that has been drilled and tapped. This is a Hornady produced modified case. You can make these yourself. I've got the, uh, the, the drill and the tap on order. I want to play around with that a little bit myself here in the future, but this is one that I ordered. So I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. It screws on right there. It has a little lock screw there. And then once you loosen that up, there's this plunger that moves. So what you do, you drop the plunger down. You take the bullet you're wanting to test. You plop it right down inside of there. And then we just push this in the gun. We push this forward, you know, which will move the bullet forward until it hits the lands. And then once we get to the point where it won't move any farther, we lock down the screw and we pull out all the stuff. So let me do that real quick. Make some room for the gun here. So obviously we need to remove the bolt. Stick our setup inside of there. You know, of course, we keep pressure on it. Make sure the case is all the way up in there. Push it forward and then lock down our little screw. Now we pull it out. And usually the bullet is stuck in the rifling. That's not abnormal. All right, so I went and got a cleaning rod and popped the bullet out of the rifling. Now we set it in here and that's it. So the way it sits right there is the maximum overall length. And you might be able to tell it is barely in there or it's not in there very much. Now the tool has a little slot there, so your calipers will fit in there. And it's looking to me like 2.890. This will be this will be fun to try and get on camera. There we go, 2.889. So let's call it 2.889. And I like to repeat the process several times. So let's loosen this guy up, pull it down a little bit, drop our bullet back in, and just repeat the whole thing over again. Yeah, that time I managed not to uh, push it into the rifling. It actually came out. All right, measurement number two, we're getting the exact same thing. 2.890 or 2.889 sometimes, 2.888. So I think that 2.889 measurement that we got from the first time is a good one. I'll tell you what, this is being a little bit of a pain in the butt as far as getting that final measurement because the neck on this guy is really quite, it's a little bit looser than I would like. So whenever you've got your calipers on there and this thing is moving around on you, it's hard to get a stable measurement. So now the question is, how does that compare to the number we would get with the split case? So let's do it with the split case. So we just sit the bullet down in there a touch. We grab our bolt. We wedge the case under the extractor. take out the magazine so I can get up in there with my fingers to help out. Okay, then we just push the bolt forward and let the rifling push the bullet down into the case. Close the bolt. And then open it back up. This can be a pain in the butt with burger bullets in particular. Hey, the bullet actually came out, good. Because it seems like the, the copper that Berger uses for their jacket is just very soft. And it really seems to like to dig into that lands and get stuck. And if, you know, with this method, if you're putting it up in there and then your case comes, you know, leaves the bullet in the lands, your, your measurement's gone. So this, this one can be a pain in the butt with Berger's occasionally, but hey, we got it out. 2891 so this is two thousandths longer than what we got with the Hornady number. Let's go ahead and repeat it one more time. 
that time it's 2.890. And 2.890 is actually what we got with the second time through the process with this guy. So we're essentially getting the exact same number. And after these couple of tests, I would call it 2.890. And consider that my number as far as maximum overall length with this bullet. Now, if you look a little closer at where the boat tail starts, yeah, like right, right about there, right? So that is not a ton of contact between neck and bearing surface. It's probably enough, but especially for a hunting round, you know, where it might get banged around and loaded and unloaded 45 times and dropped and banged around in a backpack or what, whatever, I'd like to see a little bit more contact between the bearing surface and the neck just to make sure that bullet's not going to get go anywhere, right? So I'll tell you what, we're, we're going to shoot 2.8 inches today. We know that in the Compass Rifle, our magazine, we can shoot super long stuff, but a lot of other guns, 2.8 is about what you see for, for magazine length. That 2.8 is, is also the, the SAMI maximum overall length for this cartridge. So let me push this guy down in here. Let's see if we can get 2.8 and we'll have a look at, all right, this is like 2.803. There you go. See the boat tail where the boat tail starts. So now we've 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 almost got complete contact, and eh, not quite, but we've got plenty of contact between the neck of our case and our bullet. That would make me feel a whole lot better about things. So that's going to be our overall length for today. Now back to our Hornady overall length gauge. There's an important consideration that you need to keep in mind. In this case, it didn't matter. We got the same number with this method using the bolt as we did with this method. Now, if you think about the way the Hornady overall length gauge works, this guy gets pushed into the chamber, right? The bolt is out of the gun. So what stops it is the shoulder of our chamber. So, right, so our, our shoulder makes contact with the chamber and then our bullet is, is up here, just like that. So. What if the measurement from the shoulder to the base of the cartridge does not match your chamber? Like let's say the cartridge base to the, sh to, you know, to the shoulder, that head space, let's say it's five thousandths shorter on this case than you would see in your chamber. Well, you put your calipers on here and you, and you measure it, it's gonna be five thousandths off. It's gonna be an incorrect reading. With this setup, the only thing you can be absolutely sure of is the measurement between the shoulder and the ogive where it touched the, the rifling, right? Those are what are touching things in your gun. So that's a measurement you can be certain about. The other measurement, you need, you need to check it. Now with the split case method, this is a piece of brass that we fired in my gun. We did run it through a resizer to get the neck back down so it would you know grab a hold of a bullet. But when we did that, we measured the cartridge base up onto the shoulder to make sure we weren't moving it too much. I don't think we bumped it at all, or if we did, maybe it was one thousandth of an inch. So in this case, the bolt is in there, we've got a cartridge that's been fired in the gun, and we can be, you know, maybe a little bit more confident about the number. So here's our Hornady Headspace Comparator Gauge. And if I grab a beautifully fired piece of brass from my gun, it measures 1.536. And we should be able to grab any other piece of brass out of this box and it should give us the same number. 1.536, right? It, it's fire form to my chamber, 1.536. So that is an absolute. Let's see what the Hornady, yeah, let's see what the Hornady produced case has got. 1.534. So this guy is 2,000 shorter than our fired brass. Let's see the, the, the case we were using for the split case method. Let's see what it is. This one, I'm, I'm actually seeing 1.535. So it's a thousandth of an inch shorter than our fired brass. I guess whenever we sized it, we actually did bump that shoulder. That probably wasn't the smart way to go. We should have left that shoulder exactly where it was from fired and just sized the neck. But we're not always the smartest folks around here. But still, even though the shoulders may be not in the exactly perfect place we would want with the split case, I really don't think it would matter. Because right as, as it's going in 
force is being applied by the bolt to the cartridge base. And then the bullet here. So our pressure points are the base of the case and the rifling. Those are the two places that are squeezing it together. And what stops that squeezing is whenever our bolt locks up and we close the bolt handle. So even if our split case isn't tight as far as headspace goes, I don't think it introduces the error. I, I, I might be losing you all here. I'm just kind of rambling, you know, just kind of thinking out loud. But a, a commenter had brought this up in a previous uh, video and mentioned that it was, you know, something I should keep in mind as I use the Hornady overall length gauge. And it, it just never really dawned on me. And it's, it's, it's so true. In this case, our modified case that came from Hornady is perfect. I don't care about two thousandths. Now you might, if you're really trying to get, you know, into the lands or jam into the lands a very precise amount, you know, maybe that would make a whole lot of difference for you. But I think in that case, making one of these, like tapping your own out of a fired piece of brass is probably the best way to go. I don't know. Just, you know, just something to keep in mind. We're lucky here, like I said, that it didn't matter. But I can tell you, well, like my, my, my six and a half Grendel, my old barrel versus my new barrel had a 10 thousandths, or I think it was 12 thousandths difference in headspace. So if I had ordered a modified case from Hornady, which barrel would it have matched? I don't know. Just something to keep in mind. All right, that's enough talk about that stuff. We know that we're gonna shoot an overall length of 2.8 inches. We know now that that's gonna be about a 90 thousandths jump to the lands. And we'll see how, how our burger performs. If we don't see the sorts of groups we wanna see, then maybe you know playing with that overall length could help, but we're not gonna mess with that yet. So let's move on to load data, right? Let me try and explain to you guys why I don't think I'm gonna blow my face off, but we might. And let's start with Reloader 17. It's all about context clues. We know we don't have the data we need, but let's find as much data as we can find that is close, that's close to what we wanna be. Now in this case, with a 135 grain bullet, we're kind of in no man's land. There's lots of 140 and 143 bullets, and there's lots of 129, 130 bullets, but there's not a whole lot here in the middle at 135. So let's find Reloader 17 data down in the 129 class and up in the 140 class. So the first place is our favorite. And I'll tell you what, let's talk about both powders at the same time. That's, that'll probably be the easiest and fastest way to cover this. Hornady groups their 129 grain bullets and their 130 grain bullet here in one chart. So they show with Reloader 17, they show a max charge of 43.6 grains. With IMR 4350, they show 43.0 grains. And then if we go over to the next chart, this is their 140 and 143 grain bullets. With Reloader 17, they show 41.3 grains. And with IMR 4350, they show 42.0 grains. Now, another very important thing to keep in mind when you're doing this, when you're trying to make it up on your own, bullet length can mean everything, right? The, the amount of the bullet that protrudes down into the case and takes up case capacity makes a huge difference in your maximum charge. So what I wanted to do here, if I grab the 143 grain Hornady ELDX and I grab one of our burgers, just wanted to compare their length. Now you can see the Hornady ELDX on the left is a significantly longer bullet, right? With its little, with its little plastic tip. So that's good. That means that our burger is not exceptionally long and it's not exceptionally short when compared to this bullet. It's a little bit shorter. Now Hornady with this bullet, with the 143, they shoot an overall length of 2.8 inches, the same bullet that we shoot. So that means, you know, tips at the same place our bullet is not going to protrude down into the case as much as their 143 grain ELDX. That should mean lower pressure, kind of. We leave more room in the case than they do. Other factors at play, but that, that's an important factor. So let's keep looking for information. That, that's, we've got what we can from Hornady. Now Berger has got data for their 140 grain Elite Hunter, and they show an overall length of 2.8 inches, with Reloader 17, they show a max charge of 42.6 grains. And with IMR 4350, they show a max charge of 42.2 grains. So both of those numbers are a little bit higher than what Hornady showed with their 140 grain bullets. 
but they're still pretty close to one another. So let's keep looking. The next source is the Sierra load data. For their 130 grain tipped match king, with Reloader 17, they show 43.2, and with IMR 4350, they show 43.6. If we go to their 140, uh, 140 grain bullets, they've got a soft point and a hollow point. Reloader 17, they show 42.3, and IMR 4350, they show 42.3. So same charge weight with both powders in that case, 42.3 grains, 140 grain bullet. And then if we move down to the 142 grain match king, they show 42.1 with reloader 17 and 42.3 with IMR 4350. So if we take what we've learned and we, and you know, so in general, heavier bullets require a lower charge weight with the, you know, with the same powder. We definitely see that here. I don't notice any exceptions. So the 140 and 143 grain bullets, the lowest maximum that I see is the Hornady with Reloader 17 shows 41.3 and IMR 4350, they show 42.0. So if we kind of consider that the lowest maximum, or let, let's call it the minimum maximum, just to make it super confusing, at that, at that bullet weight class. Then we go down to the 129s and 130s, with Reloader 17, Sierra shot 43.2, which was the lowest, and Hornady shot 43.6. So yeah, so we'll call 43.2 our minimum maximum. <laughs> and with IMR 4350, Hornady shot 43.0, and Sierra shot 43.6. So if we say, okay, so look at looking at those, so it looked like in the 130 class, 43 grains, more or less, was a conservative maximum, or you know, was about their maximum. And then up at the 140 grain bullets, let's see, what number did we say earlier? 42, we did have a 41.3 with Reloader 17. So let's call it 41 and a half. So I know that I'm right in the middle of these, right? I'm, I'm in the middle between the 130 class and the 140 class bullets. So what I've decided to go with is a maximum charge weight of 42.0 with both powders. That is under every single max charge that we just talked about, including you know a bunch of 140 and 143 grain bullets. The only one we're kind of exceeding is the 41.3 grain max that Hornady had for Reloader 17 with their 140 and 143 grain bullets. So I feel pretty good about this, right? Like I said, we're making it up as we go. And anytime you do that in reloading, for one thing, you wanna make sure you kinda of got your procedures down and you're comfortable with reloading before you try any stupid crap like this. And you want to do enough research to where you can say, if I blow my face off, it's nobody's fault but my own. And I feel good about that. I feel like I can say that. So if I blow my face off today, it's nobody's fault but my own. And that's why we're going to shoot 40, 40.5, 41, 41.5, and 42 grains with both powders. All right, rest of the load data, it's the same that we've been doing. We're shooting CCI 450 primers. We're shooting Starline brass, once fired, that has got small primer pockets. We're shooting 2.8 inches of overall length, and I think that pretty much covers everything. So let's get down to it. Let's start, uh, we need to resize our brass. That's step one. Now, one of my favorite things about shooting a bolt gun instead of like one of my gas guns is the nice clean brass you end up with. So. I'm not gonna be tumbling this brass or cleaning this brass in any way. The only thing I did do, the necks, I'll tell you what, let me get a piece that I didn't wipe off. There we go, here's a piece that I haven't wiped off yet, and you can see just a little bit of, a little bit of crap around the neck. Or if you're shooting particularly light loads, which I think I've got some of those. Yeah, here's one from a lighter load that, when it was shot, you know, the brass didn't quite seal the chamber very well and got some gunk down here on the rim of the case. Sometimes you'll see that, but for the most part, they're still okay. And what I have done with these, with uh, the 50 pieces of brass we're gonna use today, just grabbed a washcloth, a little tiny little bit of alcohol so that it dries quickly. And I just, you know, gave the necks a quick wipe because you don't wanna introduce a bunch of gunk and crap into your sizing die. Yeah, that guy, into our sizing die. So what I'm gonna use for lube today is just a little bit of Redding Imperial Sizing Dye Wax. This is really good stuff. A Little bit on your fingers and just a really, really light coat is enough to get the job done. Now, depending on how uh, 
I, well, I'll tell you what, the, the sizing die, we set it in the last video, so we're not going to mess around with it today. I need a shell holder. There we go. Actually, you know what? Somebody did ask me about sizing die setup recently, so yeah, we'll go, we'll go ahead and just reset the sizing die. So I've backed it out just a little bit, and bring your ram to the top of the stroke, and then just screw it down until it touches your shell holder. That's kind of your, your first position. And then you go ahead and size a piece of brass. Well, and then really, it's indispensable. Having a headspace comparator kit like these from Hornady or something like the RCBS Precision Mic, those are really cool. They're a little bit pricey, but they can do similar sort of measurements. But this, you know, helps you keep from uh, resizing your brass too much. Because with a, you know, with a bolt action gun, th this cartridge was fired in the chamber. It'll go right back into it. It doesn't need a whole bunch of sizing to the body and shoulder of the case. It just needs the, the neck reduced down to hold the next bullet. Now, sizing the case a little bit will help things feed a little bit easier, especially like, you know, hunting ammunition. I generally shoot full length sized brass just to make sure I don't, you know, end up out in the woods trying to get a stupid bolt handle to close. Because that's the, you know, with, with neck sized brass, you know, which is a die that only sizes the neck, it works just fine. You can shoot a case over and over and over again and only mess with the neck. Now the case does get a little tighter and tighter each time and eventually you get to a point where it's just, it's hard to get the bolt handle closed and it's time to go ahead and just full length resize them. And then you're back in the game, you can just neck size for four or five times or whatever. So that's certainly an option. But now one of the big advantages of that is not having to trim because, well, I'll tell you what, that's what we need to do as well. So the, the length of this piece of brass before we size it is 1.909. So 1.909, we'll see how much it stretches. I better write that down. And the other thing we want to do is uh, look at the shoulder. See where the shoulder's at, which we were measuring earlier. So here before sizing looks like 1.536. So what I want to do is I want to screw my die down until this gets bumped back and we read 1.535. One, two, three thousandths, something like that. Those are all acceptable amounts. You know, if you're loading for an AR-10, maybe three thousandths would be a little bit better for you. But here in a bolt gun, you know, we could, we could neck size if we wanted to. So we don't need to move it a whole bunch. All right, it's still reading 1.536. So we haven't touched the shoulder. I'll tell you what, let's see if the, the length of our round has grown at all. I'm reading 1.911. So the, the, the round has, or the, uh, the, the brass has stretched two thousandths at this point, but I want to take the die down just a smidgen more until we bump that shoulder. A little bit more lube again, just to make sure. 1.5355. Five. We just barely touched that shoulder. And I didn't see any additional stretch that time. It's still reading 1.911. Now, when I'm setting up a sizing die like this, I like to, to use a couple different cases because, you know, every time I put this back through the sizing die, the neck is getting squished down and then it's getting the expander ball pulled through it again. And if you use one case to set your sizing die and you run it through 10 different times, that's a lot of wear on that one piece of brass. So let's go down one more little tweak, just a little bit. I'm talking like a 64th of a turn or less. And well, I'll tell you what, let's uh, have a look at the shoulder. Yep, 1.536 before. And it's kind of a long 1.536. I see a, a, a five at the end a lot. And sometimes I'll actually read 1.537 until I jiggle it and get it just right until it reads what I want. But yeah, 1.536. Length on this one is 1.908. See how much it's stretched. Yep, 1.910. So we're getting right at two thousandths of case stretch, it seems, and 1.535. So we're bumping the shoulder one thousandth. We're getting about two thousandths of case stretch. So that's good. We're not going to have to trim this time. I think our max length is 1.920. So our trim length is 1.910. So these are these are already right about trim length. Let me double check the manual just to be sure. Yeah, max case length 1.920. So I'll test them as I go and make sure there aren't any long ones in there. But we know back from whenever we first started using this batch of brass that there weren't really any oddballs in here as far as length went. Now, every few rounds, I like to just get a little bit inside the neck of the case 
just to make sure to keep that keep a little bit of residual lube on that expander bowl in there because a lot of times you know if things feel sticky or it feels like you know rounds aren't wanting to come out very easily especially that's where they're you know that's where they're hanging up is on the expander yep length is 1.911 the shoulder is a long 1.535 still. So we're, we're full length resizing, but we're, we're doing it as little as possible. And that minimizes the amount of stretch. It minimizes the amount of uh, work being done to our brass. And maybe brass that we treat this way isn't going to last quite as long as brass that, that gets neck sized and only full length sized every once in a while when, you, when it absolutely needs it. But it's still going to last a long time. Tell you what, let me see how much we're moving the body of the case. So right here below the shoulder, I'm seeing about a 0.464 before sizing. And after sizing, seeing 0.461. So here at the top of the body, it's only getting squeezed in three thousandths total. So one and a half thousandths on each side. That's not bad. That doesn't seem bad at all. All right, so sizing is over. Now I'm just taking a minute to wipe the lube off of each case. They make brushes that you can brush out the inside of the neck. That can be really useful. I'm just gonna use a Q-tip to kind of make sure there's no lube off of the expander ball still left inside of the neck. Now from the last time these were, were loaded, most of the chamfer is still in place. So I'm not gonna go with these guys crazy with a chamfer and deburring tool, but I do like to hit the inside just a little bit just to scrape away a little bit of fouling, get it shined up and ready to take that next bullet nice and easy. And also, you know, the primer pockets are a little bit dirty now. So I've got a primer pocket scraper. There's several different uh, styles you can, you can use. Like this is a little Lee primer pocket scraper. Just, you can, you know, it's just a little flat blade. It's not, uh, well, it's not really a blade. It's just a flat spot. You can even use a screwdriver. Just get up in that primer pocket, knock out most of the carbon, and it's ready for a primer. You know, and every time you handle brass, it's another chance to inspect it. All right, this is new brass. It's still in excellent condition. But every time it's in your hands, you're feeling, you're looking, splits, cracks, dings, anything that, you know, might show that that piece of brass is compromised and needs uh, it needs to be retired. But like I said, these are these are in great shape, so I don't expect to, to find anything. Still, it's on my mind. All right, so I'm priming with this Frankfurt Arsenal hand primer again, which I think is exactly the way I did it in the last video. And actually, we're getting into the parts now. You know, now that we've prepped our once-fired brass, now we're just getting into the exact same process that we've used in previous videos with our new brass so we've wasted enough time gabbing here so it's time to, to time to get this thing moving and get on the range here pretty quick well I guess the one maybe semi interesting thing we've still got left is once I get to bullet seating we'll talk about the different you know, I have three different seating stems for my Hornady seating die. So we'll, we'll have a look at the seating stem fit with the burger bullet. All right, I got my charges of Reloader 17 weighed out and I just pulled out the seating stem that we were using in the last video, which was, I believe it's the one here for the 143 grain ELD. This is the, this is the, the seating stem I bought separately, the, the ELD, a max stem that fits this guy perfectly and I thought this bullet might use that same stem but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case because we put it down in this guy and it a eh, little bit little bit wobblier than I'd like to see so I was looking at the two stems that came with the die set one of them is horrendously wobbly And the other is perfect. This guy doesn't move at all. So it looks good. Yes, it looks like if you've got the Hornady custom grade new dimensions die set, 
and have the standard stems that came with it, you're all set for this bullet at least. Okay, so I've got our first five bullets seated. Let's see what sort of consistency we're seeing with overall length. 2.796, 2.802, 2.803, 2.804, 2.805, 2.806, 2.807, 2.808, 2.809, 2.810, 2.811, 2.812, 2.813, 2.814, 2.815, 2.816, 2.817, 2.818, 2.819, 2.820, 2.821, 2.822, 2.823, 2.824, 2.825, 2.826, 2.827, 2.828, 2.829, 2.830, 2.831, 2.832, 2.833, 2.834, 2.835, 2.836, 2.837, 2.838, 2.839, 2.840, 2.841, 2.842, 2.843, 2.844, 2.845, 2.846, 2.847, 2.848, 2.849, 2.850, 2.851, 2.852, 2.853, 2.854, 2.855, 2.856, 2.857, 2.858, 2.859, 2.860, 2.870, 2.871, 2.872, 2.873, 2.874, 2.875, 2.876, 2.877, 2.878, 2.879, 2.880, 2.881, 2.882, 2.883, 2.884, 2.885, 2.886, 2.887, 2.888, 2.889, 2.890, 2.891, 2.892, 2.893, 2.894, 2.895, 2.896, 2.897, 2.898, 2.899, 2.900, 2.901, 2.902, 2.903, 2.904, 2.905, 2.906, 2.907, 2.908, 2.910, 2.911, 2.912, 2.913, 2.914, 2.915, 2.916, 2.917, 2.918, 2.919, 2.920, 2.921, 2.922, 2.923, 2.924, 2.925, 2.926, 2.927, 2.928, 2.929, 2.930, 2.931, 2.932, 2.933, 2.934, 2.935, 2.936, 2.937, 2.938, 2.939, 2.940, 2.941, 2.942, 2.943, 2.944, 2.945, 2.946, 2.947, 2.948, 2.949, 2.950, 2.951, 2.952, 2.953, 2.954, 2.955, 2.956, 2.957, 2.958, 2.959, 2.960, 2.970, 2.971, 2.972, 2.973, 2.974, 2.975, 2.976, 2.977, 2.978, 2.979, 2.980, 2.981, 2.982, 2.983, 2.984, 2.985, 2.986, 2.987, 2.988, 2.989, 2.990, 2.991, 2.992, 2.993, 2.994, 2.995, 2.996, 2.997, 2.998, 2.999, 2.1000, 2.1001, 2.1002, 2.1003, 2.1004, 2.1005, 2.1006, 2.1007, 2.1008, 2.1009, 2.1010, 2.1011, 2.1012, 2.1013, 2.1014, 2.1015, 2.1016, 2.1017, 2.1018, 2.1019, 2.1020, 2.1021, 2.1022, 2.1023, 2.1024, 2.1025, 2.1026, 2.1027, 2.1028, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 2.1029, 
Yeah, there we go. That should keep us a little closer to the dot. Okay, moving right along. Next up is 41.0 grains of Reloader 17. Scope is still tight. <laughs> brass, you know, keeping a really close eye on the brass since, you know, we're making up the low data as we go. Primers still look nice and rounded. No problems at all. All right, folks, having some minor uh, visibility problems here with the snow, but that's fine. It feels like Christmas, man. Hopefully a big old snowflake hasn't landed on the lens of my target camera. So I guess if you're not seeing, if you're not seeing clear dots up there, that's probably why. But I can tell you, whether you can see it or not, the groups are looking good. The groups are looking really good. All right, next up, 41.5 grains. Yep, still brass looking fine. Nothing to freak out about. Wow, the sun comes out and my camera is all screwed up. All right, that's a little bit better. All right, the brass was just fine. We're up to 26, 76. Standard deviation number's tightening up. We'll have to see if that's a trend or not. But these last 10 shots, I've shot them reasonably fast and I started to get a little bit of mirage off of my suppressor. So I'm gonna give this guy 10 minutes or so with the chamber chiller to cool down a little bit. And hopefully this last group with Reloader uh, 17 will just, let's just shoot them all through the same hole. That's my plan. All right, took a nice little extended break and the suppressor is totally cool to the touch now. Shouldn't have any more mirage problems. But I tell you what, here on this group, now that we've got a nice I mean, the barrel's cold to the touch. Let's see if this first round has lower velocity, like we saw on that first shot we took from a completely clean and cold bore. Let's see if just a pretty cold bore shows the same thing. And I think the shot went left. So we'll watch and see if this first shot, see if it goes left and see if it has lower velocity. Yeah, we're 42.0 grains of Reloader 17. All right, velocity was 2686. I don't see any problems with the brass. Brass is still looking awesome. Good deal. All right, second shot was 2712. So 26 feet per second hotter. And it looks like that shot did go a little bit to the right. Interesting, we'll have to keep our eye on that. Okay, so our average was 2706, even with that one shot that was down at 2686. That first shot was really what screwed up the standard deviation, because our last four shots were all between 2707 and 2713. So that'll be, that's something we'll have to keep in mind. That first shot, a little bit to the left and a little bit slower velocity. Well, we managed to make it through our Reloader 17 loads without blowing our face off. That's good. No pressure signs to speak of. So it's time to move on to the ugly cousin of H4350, IMR4350. 
She might not be as popular, but let's see how she performs. First up, 40.0 grains. Okay, velocity nice and low, 2461. And no pressure signs, which is what you would expect at that velocity level. Good deal. So at the least, it doesn't look like we got ourselves into trouble by starting too hot. Let's see if it'll group. And the answer is yes, it will indeed group. 2481, we're not exactly setting the world on fire there. 12.4 feet per second standard deviation. I've seen worse. Hopefully that'll tighten up as we get uh, you know, the case a little bit fuller. Give this guy just a minute to cool down a touch. Moving right along, 40.5 grains. All right, good looking group, right? We could do with a little bit more velocity, but that's fine. We started low, we're working our way up. We don't wanna blow our face off, but so far, man, IMR 4350 looking pretty sexy to me. Like, did, did, I, did I mention that this is a $300 scope and gun combo? Have we forgotten that? This is good stuff, man. All right, next up, 41.0 grains. All right, brass is still looking awesome. Little bit of mirage off the suppressor again. And just to make it clear, I mean, it's not really the barrel heating up. The barrel's certainly warm, but it's the suppressor that's getting a little bit hot, a little bit of mirage off that guy. So I'm gonna give it just another minute here to cool down before we fire our last 10. All right, folks, another extended break. Suppressor completely cool to the touch. A eh, little, little bit of, little bit of warmth left in it, but pretty much cool, barrel cold. So let's uh, let's shoot these last ten shots. See what happens. Okay, forty-one point five grains. Let's see if this first shot goes left, and let's see if its velocity is low. Well, at least the piece of brass looks good. Yep, we picked up 19 feet per second. We didn't see the point of impact shift this time, but we did pick up a little bit of velocity. All right, last up, 42.0 grains. So we're not exactly up to the uh, crazy high velocities here with IMR 4350, but we started low, right? We didn't want to blow our face off, which I probably shouldn't speak too soon here, but we started low, we're seeing good, uh, good accuracy. We've got plenty of case capacity left to go up higher if we want to. 
So, all right, 42.0 grains is last. No pressure signs to speak of on the brass. Looks great. All right, not a bad little group to finish things off with. Outstanding, just good stuff all around. 2612 is our final velocity here, but no pressure signs. We might be able to go higher here in a future video. So let's get back to the bench, talk this crap over. All right, let's start out with a look at the brass and it is going to be an extremely quick look because okay, our first five rows here. Yep, these bottom five rows are the ones we shot today. Uh, let's look at some of our top charges. There's one, there's the Reloader 17. Like I showed really closely in the last video, this uh, the bolt on this gun does have a little bit of a crater look, but if we look at one of the lightest charges as well, you'll see the exact same thing. That's just the nature of this gun. And other people in the comments section mentioned that their uh that their compass rifles do the same thing nothing weird going on here with the brass at all nice round edges on our primers here's our max charge of imr 4350 same deal so really nothing nothing at all to show here i could not be happier with the performance of these bullets just outstanding stuff we didn't shoot any groups over an inch our worst group was the highest charge of Reloader 17 here at 0.989 inches. And our first group with Reloader 15, or yeah, Reloader 17, I keep wanting to call it Reloader 15, but Reloader 17, 0.915 inches. Just nothing but good groups. I, I hate that we had to move the scope, right? We moved the scope up a minute and a half after this group. That kind of sucks, because I like to be able to see, you know, what sort of trend we were seeing as far as point of impact shift. But down here with IMR 4350, with the same scope set, uh, scope settings, we didn't have anything drastic. We just had kind of a yeah, gen general upward trend from lowest to highest charge weight. So, man, I just I couldn't be happier with how our little compass shoots. This is good stuff. I think it is clear though that IMR forty three fifty was the mo was the more accurate powder. Our best group with Reloader seventeen was this six fifty eight. But we had three groups down here with IMR 4350 that were better than that. So really, really good accuracy signs from IMR 4350. And you know what? With Reloader 17, we got up to 2,706 feet per second. And that's really not that bad. Because I started think about, thinking about it afterwards. Because our factory ammunition that we shot in the previous videos, the Hornady with the 129 grain interlock, this stuff shot 2,731 out of our gun. So with our 135 grain bullet, we were at 2706 and this 129 was at 2731. So that, that's not far off. And our 140 grain factory ammunition that we've shot, we saw 2655. So I think we can push this a little bit farther. You know, we've definitely got the case capacity. We didn't see the first hint of any pressure signs. So I would feel okay Maybe pushing a little bit farther. Maybe we can hit 2,750 feet per second. I don't know, because you know we were we were pretty conservative on on our on our charge weights. The 42 that we came up with, you know, that was a pretty safe, or at least it seemed like it was going to be a pretty safe top end to shoot to, and it proved to be okay. So I'd feel okay going another half grain at least, maybe. And same thing down here with IMR 4350. We're lagging a good bit behind, right? We're 100 feet per second slower down here at 2612. So we would have a little bit, uh, we've got a little steeper hill to climb here to get to uh, to get we, to where we wanna be for a hunting load. But overall, couldn't be happier. Here's the ridiculous thing. So this box is now empty. The other 50 rounds were shot in 6.5 Grendel. And I shot them today. 
out on the same range trip. Like right after I finished this target, I shot that video's range session. The ridiculous thing is that out of this 100 bullets, I shot five shot groups with all of it. So 25 shot groups. The three worst groups I shot out of the entire box are all on this piece of paper. So that should, uh, that should tell you what we're looking at in tomorrow's video, which is gonna be uh, the 6.5 Grendel video. The Creedmoor loves them, the Grendel loves them. So I am definitely gonna be ordering some more of these bullets. Just outstanding performance. Well, I should say outstanding accuracy. And maybe once I get some more, like I say, I've got some, I've got some ballistics gel. Maybe we can chuck some into some gel and see what sort of expansion these guys get. Because in, you know, today's video and tomorrow's video, these are really seeming like they're worth the money. So we're gonna play around with them a little bit more probably, or definitely. But we've still got the 143 grain ELDX, we've got the 140 grain SST, we've got the 129 grain interlock, we've got the 130 grain Sierra Game King. So we've still got all the other bullets to have a look at here in Creedmoor. So maybe we'll find something Something else that the gun really likes that's a little less expensive. I'm sure we will eventually. So I think that's it. That's where we'll wrap this one up. I haven't decided yet what the next 6.5 Creedmoor video will be, but it'll be soon, I'll tell you that. So if you'd like to help support my channel, you can come to patreon.com slash reloading. I've got affiliate links down in the description that you can click on before you go shopping for your reloading supplies that will pay me a little referral fee. That helps a lot as well. And I will see you guys tomorrow with the 6.5 Grendel video. So see you next time.